Hello everyone, today I'm here to review for you Ghost Blitz, which looks like it's in German, but the rules are in English, German, French and Italian. This game was provided to me by Zock zum Spielen, and, well, let's jump into what is a very fast-paced, frantic, family, awesome sort of game. Let's go over roughly how it plays, and then I'll give you the pros and cons. The setup for Ghost Blitz is almost as rapid as the gameplay. You're going to take the five objects and put them in the middle of the table and shuffle the deck. Then you are ready to go. The standard game mode or variant one is to grab the item. So when a card is flipped over, it will either show you something that's missing or something that's there correctly. And that's how you know what to grab. Let's say that the card depicts a red chair. Well, the chair object in the middle of the table is red, so that's what you need to grab. But let's say the chair was blue. Well, that means you don't want to grab the blue thing and you don't want to grab the chair either. So via what's on the card, you'll either slim it down to only one thing that you can grab, or there'll be one thing that's correctly depicted that you need to grab. If you win by grabbing the correct item, well, you're going to take that card as a victory point and just add it to a pile in front of you, and you'll be the person turning the next card over from the top of the deck. Importantly, you are only allowed to grab one of the items in the middle. If you grab an incorrect item, well, if you have any sort of cards in your scoring pile, you'll be giving one of them over to whoever gets the correct item as a bonus scoring card. Across the game, you'll play through the entire deck of 60 cards, and at that point, when the deck has run out, you count up how many cards you've got, and that's the number of points you've got. Whoever has the most wins. There is another variant of it where you can either be shouting or grabbing the items in the middle, and it's a little bit more complicated because there's sort of limitations of when you shout and when you grab. In this mode, this sort of second harder variant, if the item is on the card, the matching sort of colour and item, then you shout it out. If it's not on the card, that's when you grab it. So it sort of takes your brain that extra few seconds to work out not only what should I be either grabbing or shouting, and then which one of them am I actually doing. Ghost Blitz is super fast, super frantic, and you can very much get caught up in the excitement, this sort of real adrenaline rush that is playing the game. When that card is flipped over and you are either grabbing, or maybe if you're playing the other mo uh, mode, shouting out what's there, or grabbing what's missing from the card, well, you've got a real rush of trying to work out Am I grabbing something on the card or what's missing? Are the colours matching up? And then you're grabbing an item from the middle. And often everyone does it at very similar times. Now, it's not always the case. So for some people, they look at a card and it does take them normally longer than other people. And you can get a little frustrated if you're always looking at a card, someone's already grabbed a, sort of an item from the middle, and you still can't quite work out what that is. But I've found everyone goes through patches of that when you play. You might start off and every time a card is turned over you can just look at the card, see, oh, the ghost is uh, not there, so I'm going to grab that. Um, oh, the chair is red, the book is blue, that's what I'm grabbing. You're sort of, you're just on the ball and then all of a sudden maybe someone else who was thinking, oh, I can't keep up, almost they see something on the next card, grab the green bottle, and you're then stumped and like, oh, I didn't even see that. And now it's their turn to go on a little run almost of getting things right. There's also that squabble in the middle when people do see things at the same time and both try and grab the mouse at the same time or whatever. And that's a really sort of cool thing. And it's it's sort of got that real speed of grabbing the right thing, but you don't want to grab the wrong thing because that's going to lose you points. So it does mean that it, when you've got some points, you're that bit more hesitant just to grab something. Hopefully, yes, yeah, I'm sh I'm I'm ninety percent sure that's the right thing. Oh no, it wasn't the blue book after all that I should have been grabbing. That sort of thing. I really like that. That sort of puts you on the edge. Uh, and some people will really like that. I personally think that's a brilliant 
thing about the game, but if you don't like that sort of really sort of almost panic inducing great adrenaline rush, then well, this is an experience that maybe you want to pass by. It's not just the gameplay that's quick. I love how quick the game is to get out the box, to teach brand new players and for them to be not only up to speed, but often beating you to grab the thing as well. And then once you are done, well, you're putting the cards back in, put the, like, the five items back in the box, put the lid on, you are done. There is like no setup or tear down time, very little teach time, which means you are just playing Ghost Blitz for like the entire time the game's at the table. And that's not something that even many party games do. You often are like, oh, we need to split into teams, or I just need to explain how you read the questions and how you've got... No, in this, if it's on the card and it matches the right colour, grab that. If the colours aren't matching, then you're trying to get what's not there. And I really do like that sort of speed, like for teaching, for gameplay, it all just sort of works with the quickness of Ghost Blitz. One thing that is maybe a little peculiar is the fact that like on the front of the box, you've got this normal looking ghost, and then you've got this thing as the actual ghost. It does look very much completely different from what's on the front cover. So it is that sort of initial shock of, wow, the ghost looks a bit silly, um, but well, this game isn't to be taken too seriously. It's very light-hearted. And also, well, when you're trying to grab that from across the table, it's a bit of a slightly sort of odd shape as it is that sort of circular topped domey thing. You're trying to grab that. Someone else is coming in from a different direction. Yeah, well, it just makes it a little bit interesting. And then you've got the other sort of items on the table, which look more realistic and more normal, if that makes sense, compared to the ghost. But the ghost does seem like an odd sort of, why would you shape the ghost like that when it could have been shaped something like on the box? So production wise, it, it's a bit weird. It just, the ghost looks odd, but at the same time, it matches exactly what's on the cards. And that's super important because you are trying to very quickly glance at a card and work out what am I grabbing? So it works production wise for that. It still just looks a little odd as a ghost. As with many of these sort of family speed style games, I don't think you're gonna get too many games played of it in one sitting. You'll definitely play one game and then probably want to shuffle the cards back up and go again, but I don't think after half an hour, you're going to want to be really going again, again. All right, families, younger kids, that might work really well. They might really want to be doing it. But I found once you've played sort of two games of it, I mean, you'll have gone through up the deck of 60 cards twice. Once you've done that, I feel like that's a really nice sort of finishing point. And even after one game, the one game feels like a really good length because it's like, right, we've gone through the entire deck. So it feels like you've gone through a long thing, even though individual cards are super quick when they come out and grab something, take that as a scoring. Let's reveal the next card. So individual rounds, if you want to call them super quick, but it does feel like, oh, I've finished a game. Let's add up scoring. It's a good sort of time frame for it and then you go again play another and then you probably will put it back on the shelf so overall are you looking for a fast paced very frantic sort of staring at something going what am i supposed to be grabbing while someone else has already grabbed the mouse from across the table and you're like ah yes that's probably what I should have grabbed. And then in the next round, it's probably reversed where you're the one able to see it. And then the third round, maybe you're both grabbing at the same time. It's that super quickness that you'll either love or hate. And that will mean if Ghost Blitz is for you or not. I can definitely recommend it. We've really enjoyed it for, for sort of many, many plays of this game now. And well, we're definitely keeping it in the collection. It was an absolute joy to play. Let me know in the comment section below if this review has helped you one way or the other. Let me know if you've played it and what you thought of the game. And until next time, have a ghost blitz good filled day.